A generation data group or GDG is a collection of two or more chronologically related version of the same data set. They are generally used to maintain the backup of critical data, for example, monetary transactions. And if something goes wrong, then you can easily restore the data from the GDG backups and redo the processing from the same point. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to today's JCL tutorial on Generation Data Group or GDG. In this session, we will primarily focus on what is a Generation Data Group and how a Generation Data Group or GDG works. So without wasting any time, let's look at the topic for today's mainframe tutorial. So we start today's session with introduction to Generation Data Group. After that, I will talk about the basic concept of Generation Data Group or GDG. Then we will deep dive into the GDG syntax detail. In this section, we will look at two separate syntax. First one is to define GDG catalog entries and second one is to delete the GDG catalog entries. And finally, I will end the session by telling you how to define a GDG base, how to define a generation data set within a GDG base and how to list the GDG catalog information with the help of JCL. And the last point is how to delete a GDG catalog entry with the help of JCL. So ladies and gentlemen, before I start with today's presentation, I would request you all to do subscribe to our channel because we need your support to grow our channel. And in case if you have already subscribed to our channel, then I would like to say a big thank you for your subscription. And do watch this video till the end so that you have a good understanding of how a generation data set or GDG works. So let's get started with introduction to generation data group. A generation data group or GDG is a collection of two or more chronologically related version of the same data set. Each version is called a generation data set and generation data set are non VSAM sequential data set that resides on tape or dash D. The naming convention of generation data set is slightly different. The operating system use the absolute generation number to uniquely identify each generation data set. This number is added at the end of the data set name. So the format is data set name dot absolute number followed by a version number. The absolute generation number consists of four digits for the generation number and the two digits for the version number because these numbers require nine characters including period. The data set name of generation data group is limited to 35 character instead of 44 characters. So here is an example of generation data set name. So if you see you have tt.employee.monthly.salary followed by an absolute number then you have a version number. Now let's move on to the next section where we'll focus on the concept of generation data set and how exactly it works. So let's say you're responsible for maintaining the monthly salary data of an employee and every month you used to receive a file that will be further processed in order to disburse salaries to an employee. So in a year you're going to get 12 separate files and let's say you are maintaining this data on a personal computer or maybe on a Windows platform. So in a simple term what will you do is that you create a folder and every month as soon as you get a file you just put that file in that particular folder and in order to keep a backup you just replicate uh, that specific file in another backup folder so that you can have uh, a backup in case if something goes wrong then you can simply uh, access file from that particular folder. So this is how normally you used to do it in a Windows environment. Now let's try to understand how we can replicate the same concept on mainframe with the help of generation data group. So let's say you have uh, again you have a monthly salary data and you you'll, you're going to get 12 files in a particular year, right? So what you're going to do is, instead of creating a folder, you're going to create a generation data group or GDG base. 
So if you look at this particular uh, example, you have tt.emp.monthly.salary.data. So this is your GDG base, which which is conceptually similar to a folder on a Windows system. And once you receive a file for January month, you will just create a generation data set within that particular GDG base. So just underneath the, that particular GDG base, you have a generation data set with a absolute generation number and version 00. So in this case, the absolute number which is assigned to this particular file is 1. And similarly, you have February month data, which is having a uh, absolute generation number two. Then you have March data, which is version three. And similarly, four for April and fifth for May. Finally, a GTG base is a collection of two or more chronologically related version of the same data set. So in layman term, a GTG base is similar to a folder which is holding all the chronologically related files together. Now, important point, each time a generation data set is processed, a new generation of the data set is added to the GDG base. This new version become the current generation and the old current generation become the previous version. Now, to refer to the generation of a GDG base, you can use relative generation number. When you use the generation number 0, it refers to the current generation. Subsequently, minus 1, minus 2 and minus 3 refers to the previous three generations. And if you use plus 1, then it will refer to the next generation. So if you look at the left hand side, you have a corresponding relative generation number. So if you specify 0 in your JCL, then you will going to refer to the current generation that is May data. If you use minus 1, then it would be for April data. Subsequently, you have minus 2, minus 3 and minus 4 for March, Feb and Jan data. Now, a quick recap of what we discussed in previous slide. So every time a generation data set is processed, a new generation of the data set is added to the GTG base. The new version become the current generation and the old current generation become the previous generation. You can use relative generation number to quickly access the GDG dataset. So for current generation, you will use 0 and for previous generation, you will use minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on. And for next generation, you will use plus 1. Important point, while the current generation is being updated, the next generation is referred to as plus 1. But as soon as the job is finished, the next generation become the current generation that is 0 and the other relative generation number are reduced by 1. Now let's move on to the next section that is generation data group syntax detail. So in order to define a GTG base you have to use the ID cams utility in a JCL. You have to issue a define GTG command along with the following parameters. So the syntax to define GTG base begins with the keyword define followed by the keyword GTG or generation data group. So you can use either of them. Then you have to specify GTG base name and remember the name can be of at max 35 characters. Then you have to specify the limit and the limit parameter is used to define how many generation data set are to be maintained in a group. So at max, you can have 255 uh, generation data set in a GDG base. The other two parameters that you normally code are the no empty and scratch parameters. No empty means that the oldest generation should be removed from the group when a new generation is added, while scratch means that the removed data set is actually deleted from the volume. In contrast, Empty means that all the previous generations are removed from the group when a new generation is added, while no scratch means that a removed data set is uncatalogued but not deleted. The second last parameter is owner and it is used to specify the owner ID for that particular generation data group. And the last is two and four. So it is actually used to define the expiration date 
or a retention period for a GDG base. Now let's move on to the next section that is delete GDG command syntax. Now to delete a GDG base you have to use the IDCAMS utility in JCL. However, individual generation datasets are deleted when new generations are added based on the limit specified in a GDG base catalog entry. Now let's look at the syntax of uh, delete GDG base. So again the syntax begin with the keyword delete followed by a GDG base name and then you have a keyword GDG or a generation data group. So you have you can use either of them. The other two parameters are purge no purge force no force and when you code the force parameter the GDG catalog entries and all of its GDG members are deleted. When you code the purge parameter the catalog entry and its members if force is coded are deleted whether or not they reach the expiration date and in general both of these parameters are commonly coded when you want to delete a GDG catalog entry because you want to get rid of a GDG base. Now let's move on to the next section where we'll look at various examples to understand the entire concept of generation data group. So the first example is how to create a generation data group with the help of a JCL. To create a GDG base or a generation data group, you need to follow three simple steps. First one is prepare a JCL that will use IDCAM's utility with a defined GDG command along with relevant parameters. Then if you have access to the mainframe system, then you have to submit that job or probably you can request the operator to submit job on your behalf. And if there is no runtime error, and you have relevant access in place then system will allocate GDG base either on tape or on dash D wherever you have specified. So here's a sample JCL to create or define a GDG base that can be used to store backups or any other relevant data as per your requirement. So the first two lines are job card and a job card generally used to have information related to a job. So it could be your accounting information your message class, message level and then you have next three lines which is for comment so I have included a comment that says that this is a sample JSL to create a GDG base after that you have step 001 which is actually invoking IDCAMS utility of vSAM and then you have sysprint and in sysin I have specified the defined GDG command that has a GDG base name you have limit as 5 no empty and scratch. So when you submit this job a GDG base would be created by the system. Now let's look at next JCL which is used to create a model data set. So again you have first two line is a job card which is actually information related to a job. Then you have next three line as I've used for including comments and then I'm using IFBR 14 utility. So this utility is actually creating a model data set or it's generally a simple file. I'll be using this model data set uh, to clone the properties of my generation data set. Right. So you're not required to remember all these properties again and again. And if you want, you can just specify these properties when you are creating a generation data set within the GDG base. So EMP cell is my model data set that is tt.emp.cell.model. I've created, uh, I've used disposition as new catalog and delete. Then I've specified the space and DCB parameter. So in case if you want to overwrite or if you want to change the value of any of these parameters while creating a generation data set, then you can very well do that. Now, let's say you want to view the additional information about the GDG base or its generation. So there are two ways through which you can view this additional information. First one is by using the listcat command in the JCL. And the second way is you can use ISPF delist command, right? So we will discuss about listcat command in the JCL. So here is a sample JCL, which is again using IDCAMS utility from vSAM. And I'm specifying uh, the listcat command in that. So it says listcat 
entries and I've specified the GDG base name and then I've specified the parameter as GDG and all so it will going to print all the information related to a GDG base now let's move on to the next section where we'll look at how to create a generation data set within a GDG base so here's a sample JCL which is actually creating a new generation data set in a GDG base and it is also referring to the current version of a data set which is present in a GDG base. So here's a sample JCL and the first two line is actually a job card. Then you have an execute statement which is actually running a program called EMP SL003 and it is actually using two file. First one is previous sal file which is the current version of the GTG that is tt.emp.month.salary.data so I'm using zero out there so it is referring to the current generation which is present in a GTG base and I'm creating a new file that is new sal file and it is tt.emp.monthly.salary.data and in bracket I'm specifying plus one because I'm creating a new file right and if you look at the DCB I've just used the model data set that I've created in the previous slide with the help of a JCL and the last DD statement specify the report that is employee salary report and this report is being generated by the program now let's move on to the last section where we'll look at a sample JCL to delete a GDG base and its generation data set so here's a sample JCL to delete generation data group catalog entries by issuing delete command and again you have to use idcams utility for that so if you look at the first two lines this is actually a job card which is used to specify the information related to a job then you have a few comments so that you can understand what exactly this job is doing then you have an idcams utility which will be invoked by an execute statement after that you have a delete command which is uh, having delete followed by a GDG base name then you have a keyword GDG and after that I've used purge and force to delete GDG base and its generation now ladies and gentlemen this marks an end to our today's presentation and I would request you all to do subscribe to our channel because we need your support to grow our channel and in case if you have any feedback for us then please do mention that in the comment section and apart from that, in case if you have any questions related to generation data group or how you can use that in a JCL, then also mention that in comment section. I'll going to respond back after this presentation. Once again, thank you so much for listening so patiently. Bye-bye and take care.